Hi, I'm Ryan Hampton, a person in recovery from opioid addiction and national recovery advocate, also author of American Fix, Inside the Opioid Addiction Crisis and How to End It. I'm here at Blue Ridge Community College uh, to, not, to talk not just about my story, uh, but about what we could be doing as a community uh, here, uh, but also around the country to end the opioid crisis and also the addiction crisis. Uh, I'm here to share a little bit about my journey and answer questions from uh, members of the community on what we could be doing on a local level to help push for more common sense solutions uh, that are community-based, person-centered, and evidence-based uh, to end the crisis. From what I understand, a, a lot of that community-based approach uh, is kind of catching some momentum across the country. Is that, is that your experience? It, it, it is catching momentum in certain places around the country, but not quick enough. Uh, sadly, we're still seeing a uh, shortage of federal dollars uh, that are trickling down and making it to the states, but we're not seeing that money necessarily making it right to the front lines where it needs to be. Um, what works here may not be the same approach as Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Los Angeles, California, or Little Rock, Arkansas. Um, but the encouraging news is that we are seeing more conversations like this that are happening around the country and when community members get involved in the conversation, when they start talking to their legislators, when they start offering their personal lived experience or their community experience, uh, we are seeing those solutions happening a lot quicker. What are those solutions? They look like things like evidence-based prevention, um, community funding for recovery community organizations, which are nonprofits, which help uh, assess and direct people uh, to treatment and recovery support, such as housing and harm reduction and employment opportunities. Um, harm reduction, such as naloxone, uh, clean syringes, and things like that. You know, we need a lot more than just treatment. Uh, I think the conversation has been very hyper focused on let's get people help right now dealing with this in this in the crisis phase. Uh, yet we call it a chronic healthcare problem. We certainly don't deal with it like a chronic healthcare problem. We seem to want to get people help in the first 30 days and then, you know, cease to uh, believe that they exist. You know, we know that people need help in those first five years, critical help, uh, and hopefully through more conversations like this and more understanding around the continuum of recovery, uh, we can do just that. Thank you very much for all your time. I just have one last question. Um, is, is there still a, a certain amount of stigma and shame that, that might present a barrier for people wanting to uh, seek help? Yes, and I don't like to call it stigma. I actually call it discrimination and prejudice because that's what it is. Uh, we don't have stigma against people who have breast cancer uh, or heart disease. Uh, the number one you know, public enemy that we have in addressing the, this public health crisis uh, is that discrimination. Uh, it keeps people from asking for help. It keeps people from getting into the treatment that they need. It keeps people from being able to get jobs. People are afraid they are gonna lose their job uh, if they disclose they have a problem. So yes, it is still the number one problem uh, that we have to address. But by being open about your experience, about uh, with family members being more open about the loss of a child or a child who, who's been through uh, you know the horrors of addiction and, and has made it into recovery uh, we can break all of that thank you very much for your time really appreciate it thank Best you of luck to you thank you